Hello, and thanks for joining us today for our CRTV program, Putting the Spotlight on CIOs. I'm Kelly Hill, technology reporter for RCR Wireless News. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of the trends and challenges that CIOs face in a rapidly changing digital landscape. I'm joined today by Roberta Prescott, Editor-in-Chief of RCR's Wireless Latin America and Global Telecom Analytics Channels. Hi, Roberta. And uh, Roberta is the author of RCR's recent Telecom CIO Spotlight Report, which took a wide-ranging look at the role of the CIO in the future of telecommunications. We're going to discuss that topic today, but for even more information, you can download Roberta's report from the report section at rcrwireless.com. Uh, we are glad to have John Jacobs with us today, who is Senior Vice President of Membership, Marketing, and Business Development for the Telecommunications Industry Association. The TIA represents manufacturers and suppliers of global communications networks uh, through standards development, policy and advocacy, business opportunities, market, intellig market intelligence, um, events and networking. And John will be giving us some perspective on how TIA sees the role of CIOs shifting. John, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, Roberta, can you start us off by giving us some of the key takeaways from your report on the CIO's role in the future of telecommunications? Sure, Kelly. So, hello, hello, everyone. Um, I just I just wrote the RCR Wireless News Future Report, and let's start about talking the scenario CIOs face today and telecommunications face. Uh, we see information becoming the new oil, and CIOs have started to lead their companies towards a better understanding of their client service and the company itself. Another topic is that competitions now, competition nowadays comes not only from other telecom operators but also from over-the-top players. CIOs are in the position to help communication service providers become more competitive, understand their customers better, increase revenue and reduce operation costs. In addition, telecom operators are facing digital transformation. They have new channel sales and service. And the hot topic nowadays is big data, telecom analytics, cloud computing, social media, and mobile technology. All of them have created tough challenges, and it also presents great opportunities for telecom operators. Looking at this scenario, we see carriers' priorities, and I have pointed in this future report some of them which are business growth, reducing costs to gain operation efficiency, attracting and retaining customers, reducing time to market, providing better and more personalizing offerings to the customers, centralizing billing systems, and taking advantage of M2M, mobile advertising, M payments, and the Internet of Things. So uh, to address all of these, CIOs have some technologies on their radar. Uh, some of them are business intelligence and real-time analytics solutions to monetize the information they already have and the, da and the data they can store. Solutions to improve customer experience to understand customers through data and insight such as customer experience management, customer experience analytics, and once more, cloud computing. And in this area, we see software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service. Software-defined networking is another topic pointed by CIOs as trained, and mobile developing, uh, which is putting more capabilities uh, on the phone and tablets to help telecom operators interact with customers. And um, do uh, looking when looking uh, to all of this, we can define or can uh, predict some points to future of telco CIOs. Uh, they need to be at a strategy level. To to assess and make critical business decisions, look at trends and creating opportunities to position carriers in, their in the marketplace. Telecom CIOs have to keep the business running while implementing new technologies 
and supporting the launch of new service and offerings. They also have to create a strategy to capture, store, analyze, and transform raw data into value information. And uh, in addition, when we see telecom operators moving to become more digital, uh, we take IT uh, is at the heart of carriers' transformation. So uh, these uh, were the most uh, the highlight points that I have from the future report, which is uh, available to download at rcrwireless.com. John. Great. Thanks, Roberta. Uh, it sounds like CIOs have a lot on their plate these days. Um, <clears throat> John, I wanted to get your perspective as kind of a macro view um, on the subject of CIOs and their role in a changing industry. Um, tell us what TIA thinks. Sure. So, uh, and thanks for inviting me. I'm speaking to you from TIA Now Studio here in Washington, D.C. And uh, I think it's a great report. I read it. I think it's very well done and very encompassing. And uh, I would encourage everybody to read that report as well. Uh, we are seeing a, a big shift in the role of the CIO at the carrier. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not surprising if you consider that the carrier is the only uh, agent in the executive team who can unlock real time data to, uh, it, it, we talked about monetizing that data, but importantly, creating new products and services, and also doing so in a faster environment uh, for competitive advantage. So the CIO is really a differentiator in, in that capacity. And this is a very new uh, phenomenon, and it's brought about by certain technologies. You mentioned uh, SDN and, uh, and cloud, and of course, big data, which historically big data is just globs and globs and globs of numbers and data. And what do you do with it? And, you know, uh, I come from a career background, my career, and I can tell you, you don't do much with it unless you find a way to get a lot closer to the uh, customer and find the mechanisms and the technologies that are going to utilize that data. And that's where the CIO comes in, in a very constructive and, again, differentiating way. Great. Uh, well, how about if we get into a little bit more discussion? Um, um, John, maybe you can tell us a little bit about vendors' role in helping CIOs. Uh, this sure. is a lot to tackle. It is. It is a lot to tackle. And, you know, I think, let me at the onset say that I think we're at a point in our industry where uh, the telecom carrier is going to no longer be just a telecom carrier. And it has been a holy grail approach for decades by the carriers. How do they become more relevant, more customer facing? at a faster pace. With the advent of OTT services and a highly competitive environment through OTT, they're having to really put their sneakers on and go faster and faster. And they are bringing about, and TIA through its membership is bringing about solutions like SDN, like cloud services, and find, finding ways to use big data so that it's actionable big data. And so TIA's uh, 500 member companies, which are principally manufacturers, uh, they are doing things like melding through SDN, melding hardware and software together so that we have more vertical specific technologies and services for the carriers. So a lot of the innovation that the carriers, and particularly the CIOs, are able to deploy are actually occurring upstream of the carrier. And there's a lot of partnering that goes on with the OEM environment. And so that's where you see these you know, co-located labs very often uh, or closely related uh, laboratory work, uh, whether you see software and, and hardware coming together. And, and that is uh, where the vendor community is really trying to differentiate themselves one from the other, but also trying to play a bigger value role for the, for the carrier as well. So that's a quick positioning of how the vendor community is enabling the carrier community. And I'll say also, uh, not just the carriers, but the enterprises directly. Uh, although the carriers are really in a strong position given their skill sets, their technology, and the CIO perhaps in the strongest position to deploy the types of innovation we see in the value chain. Is so that, John? Oh, go ahead. No, sorry. John, no, uh, just I uh, want to, to add something. Uh, do you see any trend uh, from vendors' perspective coming uh, over the next year and so on regarding to what? technology CIOs must be aware of that vendors are developing or just releasing into the market? Sure. So, you know, when we talk about, you know, and, and 
as marketing people, we're fast to use phrases like SDN, uh, and and you know we we were out in, in, our, in, in the valley not too long ago, and we asked everybody, can you define SDN? I think we asked five CTOs, and we got five definitions of SDN. Finding ways to hone the near-term value of software-defined networks and to deliver those services. So I think you're going to see a horse race between the OEMs trying to, uh, and working in partnership with the carriers, trying to define what the value advantage is in the near term, because all investment occurs on return. And so to speak in an SDN marketing phrase is great, it focuses our eyes, but it doesn't mean a lot to the technologist. And so I think you're going to see over the next six months, 12 months, a real focus on what the deliverables are for SDN to a particular carrier customer. I think that's interesting that you say that because, you know, one of the things that I most commonly hear about SDN is, you know, this ability to use off-the-shelf hardware. But it sounds like there is still lots and lots of room for network vendors, you know, to, to, to differentiate themselves and to help their customers differentiate themselves. And you're seeing, you know, we're talking about market motion. You're seeing across the entire value chain motion horizontally and vertically. An example uh, might be that one of TIA's newest members is, is VMware. So mm -hmm. VMware, historically, an enterprise software company, well embedded in the enterprise, but now very active at TIA, looking at a carrier environment and working across that value chain to deliver SDN-esque type services and capabilities. So that's, again, a market in motion. Uh, and then you think about what these technologies, whether it's cloud, or, uh, or, or big data or SDN itself, what it, how it is deployed by the carrier. Uh, you know, if you talk about competitive advantage, the ability of the CIO to be uh, embraced by the rest of the management team, which is not a uniform truth, right? I mean, I think, Roberta, you mentioned earlier, uh, each of the carrier have to be ready to embrace the CIO. And, but that ability really is going to, tell us the story about whether the companies will make further investments in the near term uh, on these technologies. You know, nobody wants to invest in uh, uh, a hope and a prayer. They really need results, and that's where the CIO can deliver near-term results and mid-term results. And they also have to, to, to do with the legacy. I mean, while they are embracing new technologies and looking forward to to implement SDN or to do some changes, they, they cannot just forget about all legacies they have. So how do you think uh, both sides, vendor size and carrier size, are going to equalize this? I mean, to, to deal with these new technologies and in, in, while they are embracing, uh, while they are uh, dealing with the legacy? Well, the good news is that uh, legacy networks have been through tra in transformation for several years now. Uh, and so whether it's uh, bringing LTE online uh, or if it's upgrading to a more sophisticated core network, uh, that's already, that ship is already underway. It's at sea, which is a great thing. When you talk about new technologies like SDN and, of course, like an all IP network, which we've been implementing for years now on the carrier side, uh, you know, those those sort of work uh, in tangent. So a lot of the early work and the industry and the investors to our industry have already accepted the truth that the, the network is changing uh, and that it, yesterday's network, as a switch-based PSTN network, is a huge, uh, has a huge market position, certainly in North America and in many other markets globally. It is not going to go away. So you do not want to cut off your nose to spite your face. And you want it to continue, continue to drive down costs and manage very well those legacy networks because your customers are sitting on those legacy networks. Uh, I think the, the near-term sort of strategic opportunity is how do they how do carriers attach value to some of the new plays like SDN? And again, in a mere it's sort of a mid-term environment, because when when the enterprise consumer enterprise customers or or, or consumers see the new valued services you know, taking place they're going to migrate over to those services. They're not going to, you're not going to create, and nobody wants to create a churn environment from a base. So I think it's, the skill is maintaining and giving value and most likely a price point issue on legacy network 
uh, but then as you move into these new technologies, showing that ongoing base the new value that you're creating. And one other point I just want to make, by bringing the CIO into the decision tree for new products and services, you're actually bringing uh, that CIO, you're, un you're unlocking the CIO, and you're bringing them closer to the product marketing groups within the carriers who historically have a tremendous role to play in defining new products and services. But instead of, uh, when I was with a carrier uh, many years ago, you know, the technology folks were the folks I kind of ran away from as a marketer, right? Because I didn't you know. And, but really, it's time to embrace the CIO and embrace the technologist to define new products, not to run away so you can create your own product. It does sound like there's, I mean, as far as networks and we're, we're going through so many transitions um, at the same time, it seems like this move to all IP, you know, we've got LTE, we've got so many things happening on the network side, um, you know, and then along with that, there's the kind of the service transition that you mentioned as well. There's a, a lot to handle. Yeah, I mean, and this is where, I'll, let's make one point uh, on that. This is where you think about the CIO and, and creating real-time solutions. This is where uh, the vendor community can create tools, toolkits, and and uh, services on behalf of the carrier customer, so that it, they're impacting both the product definition side, but also the customer care side. That's particularly important for enterprise customers, who are usually high-value customers within their carrier base. Yes, we are in this uh, inflection point on, of the industry. When I talk to um, TIA from for this report, we discussed about that. And what do you think is the perspective about how carriers are the key to enable service in many industry? Uh, healthcare, transportation, carriers are embracing a lot of new services. And um, could you discuss a little bit about these perspectives and how CIOs can get involved to this? Sure. I think you mentioned one earlier that was particularly relevant is machine-to-machine -machine technology. So here's a scenario where uh, the historic telecommunications industry uh, didn't play a big role, say, with industrial automation, right, or a lot of the manufacturing. Industrial automation and manufacturing historically are closed networks, closed systems. Uh, but increasingly, you're finding solutions, and not surprisingly, they're happening in innovation, smaller companies that are being uh, purchased by or, or partnering with the major OEMs, and in some cases, directly with the carrier. Uh, and they're finding ways to, uh, to have uh, essentially uh, open network solutions to uh, industrial automation requirements. So, you know, for example, you're finding in, uh, uh, I think you mentioned oil fields, or you mentioned the oil you mentioned, but in, in field automation, you're finding uh, CDMA technology as a backup, uh, a backup uh, channel for fixed line communications. That's for monitoring and for reporting. But what you're going to see over the next several months and years is actually wireless technology moving into a control environment. So as, as our cybersecurity capabilities increase on the network side and the equipment side and the carrier side, as we win over new uh, verticals like industrial automation, uh, convincing them that there's, uh, they already know the cost benefits of using wireless versus running miles and miles and miles of fiber, uh, which, they will, which they've done already and they will continue to do. But using wireless, because we're addressing issues uh, like cybersecurity, and uh, low latency uh, gives new value to a vertical market that historically t uh, the associate the industry rather excuse me the industry has not had a deep relationship with. Um, Roberta, I wanted to to read a little quote um, you, from uh, from an Obam analyst that you uh, that you talked to for the report. It says he said uh, the amount of data that a telco has with multiple systems and disparate departments requires a major effort to consolidate the information that telcos generate and have internally. Then making the critical decisions about how to mine this information, prioritize its value, and monetize this data is one of the major issues for telecoms uh, today. Uh, John, you mentioned you've mentioned big data in passing a couple of times here. I want to dig a little deeper into that and. Um, you talk about how uh, telecom companies, they've always had data, um, but how do you think things are changing in terms of how they're analyzing it and, and transforming that raw data into actionable intelligence and, and good information? 
That's a great question, and, and, it, and it, has, it follows two paths. One is an internal path that is a cost control path for the network operator, uh, which is pretty intuitive. Uh, the other is uh, how do they better inform customers on the services and how do they optimize their customers, whether enterprise or consumer, usually enterprise most likely. Um, then, you know, finding out ways to, uh, to add, add that value. So I think, you know, we're looking at scenarios where uh, the associate, the, the industry, is, uh, you know, over over a narrow period of a narrow band of time, trying to add that greater value uh, to to the uh, to the carrier community. Um, may May I add something? Um, yeah. No, just uh, I, I wrote yes. Uh, previously to this future report, I wrote a, a rep another report uh, about telecom analytics, and what I found from uh, many interviews from carriers and analysts is that we are going to see this whole um, transforming of all this big data into some reasonable and more intelligent data. But we are just taking the, the first steps toward this uh, new scenario because there are a lot of opportunity for carriers to analyze data from their uh, systems such as CRM, OSS, BSS, but they can also add data from social media, data that, that can they get from mobile device, tablets, how users are consulting data and information and carrier service. So what I found is that we are just in the beginning and the opportunities are really great and they're understanding how to use and how to manage all of, all of this. Yeah, there's been, I've talked to some people recently about some interesting uh, things in terms of network-based location services and, you know, being able to provide information to, say, you know, re retail planners or traffic planners. And there's just a wealth of information out there and, and that it has a real possibility of, of monetization for the carriers in new ways that they haven't done before. Um, you know, but they're just really starting to get a handle on it. Uh, for their own networks, as well as these, you know, potential new new revenue sources, because they can better understand their customers and they can provide some unique service. Of course, they have some to deal with pri uh, uh, privacy, for example, and how they're going to deal with this uh, personal information. And they are also thinking about selling or making some agreements with third parties to use gel location, as you said, uh, to offer some uh, retail new plans or something like that. So there, there's some a couple of uh, very interesting opportunities upcoming there. Um. So, so John, are CIOs becoming more involved in some of the day-to-day -day things that will help in, you know, in the utilization of this, these, these new sources of data and uh, and new, you know, analytics and, and processing that's available? I think they are, and, and as again, it's not uh, all CIOs as well as all carriers. There are different uh, legacy environments uh, that. Some move quicker than others. Some are more willing to embrace a CIO, for example, at a uh, product strategy table over the next three years, uh, and you know, finding solutions that are essentially network-oriented solutions rather than on the marketing team side. Often, marketing in a carrier will try to uh, uh, give a fresh face to a known functionality, right? But and and that that has a benefit. But the bigger benefit is uh, when we see the CIO, and I think you'll see, you'll know when the CIO has been embraced, because a lot of the solutions you'll see for both consumer and enterprise is when they are dependent on real-time data, uh, real-time data that could only have been acquired uh, through connections and, and technology and software that brings it from the network and puts it in the hands of the customer, whether it's an enterprise or, or a consumer. Roberta, anything else that you'd, uh, that you'd like to cover today? Yeah, uh, no, just uh, one thing to, to add. Um, in, uh, for, in one of the interviews I made, uh, the global CEO, CIO from uh, Telefonica 
he told me that as telecom as carriers are becoming more digital, CIOs' roles are improving. And in my particular view, of course, there are going that there will not be all CIOs are going to have a, a really strategic seat on the board. But those who know how to take advantage of this shift to become more digital and to embrace new technologies, of course, they are going to have a very brilliant future in, across telecom operators. John, what do you think are some of the strengths um, that you see in the industry, where you see that happening with, TA, with, uh, with CIOs? What are some of the personal, um, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe the personal or the business sense for, um, you know, among CIOs that you think are, that are going to be particularly successful? You know, I was just, as Roberta was speaking, I'll, I'll answer that because uh, I was just thinking of uh, BT's 21 century network where Matt Ross, when he was there, said, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have the first all IP network globally, and he did. And he had to play a very, very strategic role at BT. And if you know Matt Ross, uh, he's a big personality and a great guy. Uh, and uh, he had the the vision and the, and the force of personality to get into these executive decisions, strategic product setting, directional setting meetings, and, and to realize, to bring the network into the 21st century for British Telecom, that's the type of personality who uh, is going to succeed at crossing that bridge from technologist to, uh, to senior executive uh, in these companies. And, I, and, and so that's sort of the, the mix. But, I thought that uh, I just it was, he, he popped into my mind when you said that. So uh, uh, I, I think there's that. But I think importantly, the organization internally, again, has to uh, build, break down the silos between uh, the value of a technologist being perceived as a network function and the value of the stock and the value of uh, the company to its consumers, to its customers. When the organization internally can start seeing the CIO in that way, then he or she will be much more embraced. Um, TIA has its annual conference coming up, and I think some of these things are on the agenda to be addressed um, that are also yes, addressed are. In, in, in Roberta's special report. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what's on the agenda at uh, TIA 2013? Sure. Uh, so TIA 2013, it takes place uh, October 7th through the 10th, just about three weeks away. And not coincidentally, it's entitled The Future of the Network. And so uh, there we will discuss uh, six conference tracks, 10 workshops. Several of those dedicated workshops are an SDN workshop, a cybersecurity workshop, which I don't want to under leave un unexplored here. Cybersecurity is a vitally important uh, threshold issue for a lot of product innovation. And so you're going to see that as part of the product set and the solution set in, in, in the next months in a bigger and bigger way. Uh, and then, of course, Machine to Machine has a dedicated uh, both workshop and track at the event. This is uh, our annual conference for TIA. And as I mentioned, TIA is about 500 member companies, mainly manufactured, but some carriers as well. And uh, so we'll see a lot of their leadership come in. Uh, the, the attendee typically is a technologist or a senior marketing person or an executive with these companies. It's held here in Washington, D.C., because I want to underscore, and you, you folks know this at RCR, the importance of policy. Regulatory oversight is a big issue. So you mentioned, Roberta, privacy. That's a huge issue in Washington, D.C. And so at the event, we're bringing together markets, technology, and policy so that we have a more encompassing conversation. And we'd be happy to circulate this report, the fantastic report. Um, Roberta, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up here? Uh, I, I think we covered uh, the whole, uh, the key points of the, the future reports. And I just want to, to make one last comment about the trend technologies I've been hearing a lot. It's about cloud, mobility, big data, and social networks. Uh, we've been hearing that from about a year now. And in my opinion, my personal opinion, I believe these four, four concepts are, are going to drive CIO's efforts from over the next years. I don't know if you are agree, but I, I, I really think it's oh, going to happen. Uh, OK. 
Great. Well, thank you both so much. We had a great discussion here today. Um, again, anybody who wants more information and to download Roberta's report, that can be done at rcrwireless.com. John, Roberta, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.